there is nothing quite like the cube just firing immediately when you hop into that bad boy. And we're going to take this guy, this little beautiful Mox Arena. This is a good pack, though. You got the One Ring, Fractured Identity, Grave Titan, Elder Gargroth are fine, Bone Crusher is fine, Rona is fine. We could get something back here, but we're taking the the Mox Arena. Imagine if they had stream back in the 50s and it was just audio streams. I mean, there's a lot of people who listen to streams like in the car without the video. I don't even know what a unicorn game means. Maybe you're a unicorn game. Did you ever think about that? No, you didn't, did you? So I'm looking at Commander Masters cards, right? I'm just going through the set, seeing if there's anything I want to pick up. And I'm not sure, like I sorted the set by set number, right? So I can see all the white cards, and then all the blue cards, black cards, red cards. But I'm not sure why it all the cards go through, and then the basic lands go through. And then starting at 704 is Zulodok. So that's like the new Eldrazi, and that's like where it starts, I guess. But I'm not sure why. I guess these are all the... Are are all these cards the new cards that, that have never been printed before? Is that what they're doing? They're just putting them in the back now so that there's no confusion? I think we're going to take Hexdrinker here. Hexdrinker is a pretty solid dude. I mean, this pack's also stacked. You got Batterskull, Cauldre Complete, Ulamog. I like taking Cauldre Complete, but I guess I feel like I can often get Stoneforge Mystic. I mean, Hex Drinker is like a Cauldre Complete without Stoneforge Mystic, though, you know? What are we taking here? Arbor Elf? Lotus Petal? It doesn't say they're from the Commander decks, though, does it? It just says, it still says CMMs, Commander Masters. Usually the Commander decks have a different set notation. Is that not true in Commander Masters? I think it's a sexual thing. Fascinating. Yeah, I'm just going to take Arbor Elf. I mean, this is kind of like a, a start we want for an Arbor Elf. I like Terra Sunder a lot. and we can I can easily see playing Black as well. Kinnon Bonder Prodigy is nice. Um... So non-land permanent for mana. So Mox would produce two. Arbor Elf would not, still not produce any mana. Because is Zulodok in a commander deck? Like, like all of these cards look like cards that have not been reprinted or have not been printed before. These look all like all new cards. You got Vronos, Titan of Lit Yara, Taunting Sliver. These look like all the new cards that have never been seen before. Anyway... Also, Kinnon is great when you're able to act. I'm going to take Kinnon. I feel like it's been a while since we've drafted a blue-green rampy type monstrosity. I do like a Botanical Sanctum. I also wonder if it's early enough to take Opposition and craft around it. And I think it is. Huh. It's probably just Endurance here. I don't think I like Odawara enough. Yeah, I'll just take an Endurance. We also don't have any land things to make Crucible exciting. Deranged Hermit and Hornet Queen are both very good with Opposition. I think Garrick is the better card. I think Hermit is the better Opposition card. I'm going to take Hermit because I think it just makes Opposition that much better. I like Elvish Mystic probably more than Waterlogged Grove. One, two, three, four. Nothing's coming back from this pack. Yeah, I'm just going to take Elvish Mystic. Oh, wow. Elder Gargaroth coming back is pretty sweet. 
like that a lot. Batter Skull came back. That's cute. Uh, we're just going to take Outland Liberator. This card's just solid. Just a solid gentleman. Dude, I really love this Rise of the Eldrazi card. It's pretty cool. <laughs> We're going to take Mind Slaver. Hold on, we'll show it in a second. I uh, guess Treasure Cruise. We're never going to have Field of the Dead going. Can't be countered. Destroy a permanent. Target player draws four. Take an extra turn. But it costs 12 mana. So, that's a bummer. Why is it so expensive? Omniscience. Yeah, I mean, that's a thing. That's a thing. Okay, so none of the blue-green lands came back. That's fascinating. Mike B is doing his own thing. I, I don't know. I actually don't keep tabs on Michael B. He is his own person, as am I. Hunter is good. Getting old. He's upstairs sleeping right now. Oh, wow, we got Dig and Treasure Cruise. So none of the cards we wanted really came back, which is kind of funny. Is this the one time, like... Oh. Oh. Oh, that's exciting. What goes what goes great with a Mox Emerald? It's a Soul Ring. It's a Soul Ring. We're going to take that. Now you're playing with power. Nintendo power. You guys get it. Okay, so these two are like our only blue cards. I'm not 100% on them yet. Finale is an option. Ponder is an option. Thoran Dynamo is an option. We have Kinnon. Yeah, Strip Mine's fine. I don't really give. I don't really care about Strip Mine to be honest. We already passed Crucible as well, so it's not like we're going to really... I would take Golos if we had more of a chance at activating Golos. Um, I think without activating Golos, he's literally just a 5-mana Primeval Titan. Plus, we also don't have many cards that like are Windmill Slams if we hit off of Golos. I think I just want Thran Dynamo because with Sol Ring, Mox Emerald, and other cards, it's just not terribly difficult to cast it. Yeah, there's a natural order. <clears throat> so I'm actually kind of tempted to take a Traxa and see if this natural order comes back. Because this is not coming back. No one's ever going to let a Traxa come back. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Wow, you guys, are really, you guys are really having some fun. Yeah, I'm taking a Traxa here. Yeah, upheaval's not terrible. Especially with Soul Ring, Mox, Thran Dynamo. We might just be a, a, an upheaval deck. Oh, boy. I actually do like that. All right, hell with it. Upheaval's a plan. We're, we're making it happen. Um, I think... I think we're just taking Kogla here, and it's because I want to have some big things. We have a bunch of mana, but no real great payoffs. So we're going to take this guy. We're going to put you guys back where you belong, too. It's just confusing me. I'm getting confused. Oh, I love a Seeker's Chariot. 
that's pretty good. And it's also good with opposition. It makes a bunch of creatures. Not super excited. I'm just never super excited about this Tamiyo. Oh, I do like a Nissa. I also do like a Wall of Roots. Chanel, I'm sorry. I'm going to actually turn off the stream, guys, so that Chanel can go back to watching the VODs. I'm going to take Nissa here. I think we have a lot of early ramp right now, and I'd rather have some payoffs. Oh, wow. Fast Bond and Nissa? Jeez. Fast Bond, Upheaval. We have to go Fast Bond with Upheaval. Now we're hoping for Sylvan Library, Corsair of Crew Fix. Or like Ramunap. Yeah, fast bond upheaval is definitely the dream. Great, I didn't even want to watch this. <laughs> God, he's so aggressive. Third Eye Chion, explain what your name means. Oh, look at this. Look at this asshole. All right. Well, I'm going to take this guy. I don't think we're going to play it, but like, we're not playing anything else in here. Like, yeah. Okay. Seems good. Seems medium, we'll say. Well, I, yes, I know Chion. I know Paul Chion, but I don't understand third eye before Chion. I don't, I don't get the, 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 I don't get the portmanteau that we're making here. Oh, Delighted Halfling or Olvenwald Oddity. Delighted Halfling actually lets us cast both Kinnon and Leovold. That's kind of, that's kind of tempting. Okay, you know what? You sold me. I don't think Ulvenwald Oddity, Oddity is really compelling me enough to to take it over that. Third, like in first, second, third. Do you want me to explain? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess I guess you're right. You're right. I was foolish to ask. It's very obvious, and that's on me. Love a good portmanteau. Me too. It's my favorite kind of wine. Um, I'm going to take the Jetmere's Garden. There's the natural order. Coming right back. That's pretty nice. Yep. Had a feeling that was coming back. And also, I like, I'm like. i glad I took Halfling because of that. None of these are exciting. We'll just take life. We still have another pack. I feel like we could... Oh, wow. Oh my god, I knew you were going to say Bortmanteau, and I was like, I was waiting for it. <laughs> Good fucking lord, that's wonderful. What a guy. I think I dislike Tamiyo less with Upheaval for some reason, like being able to go... The, the problem with Tamiyo is that she was definitely meant for Constructed right choose a non-land card name reveal the top four cards of your library put all cards of the chosen name from among them into your hand so it's basically meant to obviously you're gonna have four ofs in standard right so you just your 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 odds of hitting one or multiple of the card you're looking for is high so like putting it in here when you have like let's say you play around turn four you've lost 11 cards you have like a one in 29 chance so this pack is pretty unexciting. I think I just want Sylvan Safekeeper as a, sa a land sacrifice outlet in case we get like Ramunap Excavator or Titania. Or Zurin Orb. Or just giving your creatures Shroud is also just not terrible. So yeah, sure. Well, this pack is fairly underwhelming. No big creatures for natural order. No great land synergies. I had to first pick a Sylvan Safekeeper, and now we're picking, like, Augur of Autumn? I mean, it's not Corsair of Crufix, but it's still pretty decent. 
I don't think I care about Coalition Relic here. We can also Natural Order for a Leovold. Who hasn't done that before? You ever eat yogurt? I have. Some yogurt is aces and some yogurt is not aces. Oh, I like a tropical island here. I also like a wooded foothills. The sad thing is we're probably not getting either back. <laughs> it's frustrating. Getting back wooded foothills, if we got like Remyanap, is better. Right now, wooded foothills is literally just a... Just a forest. Whereas like we can get a windswept heath or a misty rainforest or something. I'm going to take the trop. <clears throat> there is a fallen shinobi I do not think we were a fallen shinobi deck hey look we could have had stoneforge and cauldra and batter skull I told you like this guy no one takes stoneforge anymore even though it's pretty solid I kind of just want prime time here we don't have a ton of expensive creatures plus prime time into upheaval into fast bond is pretty good Sail into the West is also interesting with Leovold. Huh. I do love a Caracas, but I think I want wind conditions more. I almost like Sail into the West a lot here. Yeah, I'm taking Sail into the West. I just think that's probably going to be... Oh, wow, Pest Infestation is fantastic. Definitely taking a pest infestation. Yeah, cool. Hey, double hermit. Double hermit with with opposition seems pretty decent. And there's nothing else great in this pack. I do like thieving skydiver, but I think double hermit is kind of where we want to be. If we're if we're upheaving. There's an uncolored talisman. Also, Invasion of Ikoria. <clears throat> Search for a non-human card with mana value X. Or less. That also gets Leovol out of our deck. I think it's just Tireless Tracker. We're just going to take the Tracker here. That's got to be better, right? Also, we can take out Safekeeper. And probably Endurance. I don't think I'm going to main deck Endurance. It's a fine card, but... It's definitely a 3-4 that might be reasonable sometimes. <clears throat> they errated the One Ring in Historic to what? And no, I really hate when they do that. Ari Aster, that name sounds familiar. Um, I have not seen many Ari Aster films. I have not actually seen Midsummer or Hereditary yet, and I did want to see Bo is Afraid. It looked very good. Although its reviews are not stellar. Regrowth, Scavenging Ooze... Hmm. There's also a Grist. Probably not able to cast a Grist. We can cast it with Delighted Halfling, actually. We can also search for it with Natural Order. That's funny. I'll just take Regrowth here. Uh, Knight of the Reliquary doesn't excite me very much when our only real target is a Tropical Island. Hallbreaker Horror, I guess. Really, Bo is Afraid might be the most Frank Lepore film ever. That's interesting. I'm very curious why. And I hope it's not in a bad way.
Does the movie draw all lands? Fantastic. The strange thing about the Johnsons. <laughs> no, man, I love you. Just watch it and share your thoughts. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's take Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Dark Depths. There's no real way to take advantage of that here, is there? I guess I'll just take... Oh, wow, they're going to give it to me. Look at that. They were going to give me the dark... Wow! <laughs> what a treat! Oh, boy. What an absolute gem. All right, well, we can cut you. We need one more cut. Wow, what a shocking twist. And a devoted druid this late, geez. I mean, we can probably play 16 land, to be honest. Now we have devoted druid. Uh... Oh, wow, even that's great. Jeez, jeez. Oh, jeez, Rick. I mean, we just cut Leovold. It's kind of cool with Salem to the West, though. It's very hard on the mana, though. Whatever. Maybe we just cut that in. Maybe we cut Salem to the West. I think we're, we're playing Leovold because of Sale, but I don't think we really want to let them draw seven cards. And this seems like a pretty good 24. Invasion can go get Primeval Titan, Kogla, Elder Gargaroth, either one of these guys when we have opposition. Tireless Tracker, any of our one drops. Yeah, I think this looks good. All right, let me screenshot it. I get the whole thing this time because there's really no, there's no downside to that. All right. I'm eating yogurt. <laughs> okay. He's a good guy. I think we want four and ten. This is five blue sources. I don't know if that's enough, actually. Because none of these guys produce blue, except for Arbor Elf with Tropical. I think we have to go five, nine. Because this is also Mox and Trop. We don't have Rafelos either, actually. So we can easily go 8, 6, which is really 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is 10, 7. Like, without Rafelos to capitalize on our forests, I think this is actually probably just fine. Especially when these are both double blue. I just hiccup and got, I just like did like a head hiccup burp and got real lightheaded for a second. I thought I was going to pass out. Oh, God. Still might on stream. That's going to be embarrassing. Okay, I think we're good. That was very awkward. I mean, I do wish we had some of the big, fat, beefy creatures for natural order. What did we take over that? We took, there was a natural order and a Traxa, and we took something over both of those. I'm very curious. Oh, it was upheaval, actually. So I think that's correct. Because I think this kind of defines our deck. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Got Agatha's Soul Cauldron, but I don't think I understand this card enough. Creatures skew control with 1-1 counters on them have all activated abilities of all creatures exiled with this card. Are there enough activated abilities in the cube, or is this just a way to like put 1-1 counters on creatures? I don't, I don't think I understand this card in the cube. In Constructed, obviously, again, you build around it, but like... But, like, what activated abilities are there other than, like, mana abilities? I mean, I'm sure there's a couple, like, this guy. But I don't think they're... 
like they're not super oppressive, right? Like that's not even an activated ability, that's a triggered ability, so. Well, to use Mind Slaver, you just target your opponent and take their turn. What problem is, you know? Grist and Kikijiki. Uh, Grist, well, that's interesting. How would Grist even work? Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, the thing is, like, I, I just don't see Agatha's Cauldron being, like, super effective if it's just letting you copy a looter. Yeah, like, again, those are both just looters. Like, I don't know. It's it's weird because typically the ability to put a counter on a creature is at odds with not letting them attack, right? Like, if I put, if I put plus one, plus one counters on one of my creatures, I want them to be able to attack. Whereas, like, a lot of the abilities are looting, so that prevents me from attacking. <clears throat> yeah, Ballista, but it costs four? I don't know, man. Like, I, I guess these abilities just don't... I guess if you're just building around these abilities, I guess that's fascinating. I don't know. So what, each creature with a counter on it gets that ability? Gets the abilities under the cauldron, is that correct? I wonder if they're going to show up for our game. They're 1-1, one, one, we're 0-0. Zero, zero. So this is for all the marbles for them, you know? Can you exile creatures from any graveyard or just your graveyard? Probably just your graveyard, right? It's a very complicated card. I mean, Mind Slaver is easy, right? You just target them, and then you're like, I got your turn. You're like, mm, I got your turn. Ooh. Any graveyard. Is that true? <laughs> Asks chat. Immediately doesn't believe chat. <laughs> Excel target card from a graveyard. That's pretty good for, yeah, that's pretty good for two mana. I don't think our opponent's ever coming. That's kind of sad. I was hoping to play some games. I'll pause it until they get here, YouTube viewers. All right. Oh, this is a hand. I will keep. This guy into this guy, huh? Into this guy? No, this one could be good. <laughs> they just found the stream. Oh boy. Wouldn't that be funny? But not impossible. We could start with Hex Drinker, but I think I want to preserve that until we can get a little better of a. Oh, you're just going to. See, this is why. Yep, that's why we save, save the Hex Drinker. <laughs> save the Hex Drinker, save the world. That's what I always say. He always says that? I've never heard him say that before. All right, buddy. Get, get busy drinking. Don't kill it. That ain't going to kill it. Do we put a card? Do we mill a card? Ooh, here's the question. Mill it! I let him draw. <laughs> All right, we're hexing. Get busy hexing. Don't do anything crazy. Oh, you're tinkering. Fantastic. Mm, okay. Subtlety. Sure, you got it. So this guy's at four. Next turn, he just goes. He goes wild. Yep, this is totally fine. Not great. Oh, okay. They're at six. They're at five. They they're doing well for themselves. Oh, all right. That one's got got that one too. Boy, this really worked out well for them. All 
Yeah, having Tefri and Sensei's top with Bolas and Citadel is pretty good. Winds of Abandon? That's unfortunate. I got a second blue. <clears throat> I mean, Kogla gets to fight this guy and then kill some stuff, so that's pretty good. Can we just deal three to them in any way? Is that a thing we can do? Scarab got Jace the Mind Sculptor. Wow, what a guy. <laughs> they just returned their subtlety to their hand? Is that what happened? Interesting. I am fascinated by your decisions. Interesting. What's well, so we can do with this for four, right? What does that get? It gets hex. We can do it for three and get hex drinker. Then they can just tuck it with either one of these guys. That's problematic. Are they going to subtle? The oh, they're going to force. Fantastic. They just have it all. Wonderful. I'm having a good time. Man, I felt like hex drinker was was in a really good position there, but. The Binder, thanks for saying so, buddy. Really appreciate it. They have 13 cards in the library. Can we, uh... I, I can't even see their cards. What is that? Why is it doing that? Can we make it smaller? Oh, that's so much worse, though. That's new, and I don't like it. God, why do they have six cards in their hand? That's wild. <clears throat> hmm. So we can do this for five. We can also do it for four. Get... We can't kill this guy. This guy's a real pain. You've not seen this happen for others. Interesting. Yeah, but I haven't changed anything. Auto card sizes. Why was that not selected? Oh, maybe when I went to... I think I went to make cards bigger at one point. Auto card sizes. Okay. Let me make them big. And then see what happens when I hit auto card sizes. They shrink my... Okay, well, that might be the, the solution. Getting like what what is there a five drop we have that can do anything? There's a there's a couple hermits we can get here. We're playing around subtlety here for sure. Cool. Uh I will search my library. Get hermit. I mean, if they can't deal with five tutus, like, that's a thing, right? They can tuck one, bounce one, block one, right? So then they take three. I don't know. This could be good. They have seven cards. That's a lot. Five cards and a subtlety. And fractured identity. Fucking phenomenal. It's going to be one of those drafts again, guys, where they just have it all. <laughs> Always good times. Yep. <laughs> I 
Oh, you need the exact card that gives you my card. Fantastic. Even if it was like a Sower of Temptation, that wouldn't have done it. A Treachery wouldn't have done it. Had to be that. Yep. Really tempted to concede here, but like it's kind of hard to do so when they're so low on life. Even if they have a Teferi emblem, it's kind of brutal. Like we know they have subtlety in hand, they're just not playing it. It's cool. <laughs> Solitude and subtlety. Phenomenal. Oh lord, dude. Yeah, we're just gonna go to the next game. This is fucking ridiculous. Where was Pest Infestation when I needed it, huh? So their graveyard didn't seem relevant. They have a ton of great artifacts and enchantments, but all of our artifact and enchantment removal is in the deck already. Leovold seems decent here. I don't know if we have a great way to bring him in. Like, our ways to cast Leovold are literally, like, Delighted Halfling into Leovold, Natural Order, or Invasion. None of which are super exciting. I almost kind of like Sylvan Safekeeper here, though. Like, they're targeting our stuff a lot. Uh, I can probably take out Kinnon, maybe. Mindslaver. I don't think Mindslaver does much against them. I just don't think we're going to get to 10 mana before, like, they do anything about it. Uh, it might not be terrible. I don't know. Nissa is also a great way to deal with artifacts and enchantments as well. Man, turn one hex drinker felt pretty good there. I will keep this. So if we draw one more land in the next two turns, well, I guess on turn two, then we can play Thran Dynamo if we play Fast Bond. Or we're definitely playing Fast Bond, I guess. That's... Yeah, never mind. I was like, if we, should we play our lands on turn one? No, there's never a good real reason to play your lands on turn one. Of course. Why wouldn't you have a Mox? <laughs> okay. Phenomenal. Just the who's who of, of good stuff here, huh? Well, next turn we can play Thran Dynamo or Augur. Yeah, if we had Leovold here, there's just like it's we have so few ways to cast a Leovold, and if we end up drawing it, like it's just worse. Well, not ideal. Unless we can hit a bunch of lands, turns out we hit zero lands, so that's fun. <sighs> Let me guess. Chase the Mind Sculptor seems good. Sure. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love a Leovold against this deck. They've already played Preordained, Baleful, Strix, and Jace, so. Beautiful. Um, so what can we do against this Jace right now? We have five mana. One, two, three, four. Actually, can we play a Forge... We have a one and a two power creature. If we had a third power creature, like an Elder Gargaroth, we could play this off the top, but Elder Gargaroth prevents us from doing that. 
because we're playing all of our mana. This is a one. This is a one that makes twos. They also don't get to see this, which is nice. We, we get to look at the top card for our library. They do not. And if we had one more land, we can go Dynamo into Gargaroth or into Deep Forest Hermit. I am kind of afraid of Fractured Identity again. I think it's worse on this guy, though. So I think I'm just going to play Hermit here. Maybe it was smarter to play Thran Dynamo into Safekeeper. I don't know. Because I'm sure they're just going to go... Oh, they went to... Is this Fallen Shinobi time? I mean, I can't block, so... No. They're just Wrathing. Got it. Yep. Cool. So, Sylvan Safekeeper would not have done much against that. Toxic Deluge for two, three. Yep. God, they really fucking have everything, don't they? Oh, boy. Ripping Opposition would be cool if they didn't have exactly what they needed at every given turn. Oh, look at that. There you go. Make sure you have six cards in your hand. Yeah, we're just not winning this game, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, what an absolute fucking shitlord. Amazing. Oh, th three minutes after you, too, just in case. Just in case. Man, today's been the hell of a day for drafts, that's for sure. Cool. Yeah, you can just have your fun. Enjoy your enjoy your games. Have fun playing with yourself. No, I have him to Torok as well. I will I'm gonna make you discard two of your three cards. Yeah. Only I will play with all of the cards. Okie dokie. Have a good one. Welp, see you later. I don't feel like our deck is terrible. I feel like it's decent against opponents that literally don't have an answer for every card we play. Yeah, it definitely felt basically constructed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had an answer for literally everything, so that was that was a good time. Yeah. Just a little frustrating. Ah, uh, the still had all these. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, what can you do? Yeah, oh, you definitely missed an absolute, absolute blowout of a blowout. This is a keeper. Uh, yeah, I think we're just leading with Arbor so we can play Chariot on two. Alternatively, we can play this, and if they don't have an answer, we just get a 3-3 that kills a bunch of their artifacts. I might like... That actually seems pretty good. Alternatively, they can be like, oh no, I have four spells on turn one. Kill it. And I'm like, oh no, that's sad. Stort, are you taking a break from, uh, from Starfield? I'm keeping Starfield paused in the background. Oh, they had a spell... God, what a, what a rascal. So one, two, three, we'll just play Arbor Elf here. 
I guess we could have played not Arbor Elf, but I'd really rather just have more mana. I mean, five mana next turn opens up some options. Taking a break from sleeping. It's only 120, man. Don't be a little baby. Okay, you got it. Oh, Mox Opal. Okay. And it's online. Look at that. Mox Opal online. Oh, a little hermit. Fascinating. Touche. Touche. One. Untap. Actually, I'm wondering if I just chariot here. Chariot feels okay. Yeah, get busy topping. The, I like the pop pork at the end. That's nice. Uh, the pop pork at the end is a nice touch. <laughs> uh, uh, strip mine can take out basic lands, my friend. You're thinking of wasteland. I farted in my pants. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just the best chat. I think the problem with such a demoralizing round as like round one is that it sets you up mentally for the rest of the rounds. You're like, well, my deck is clearly terrible and any deck can really just destroy it. And like mentally, I'm kind of trying to climb back from that where I'm like, is our deck decent? Can it actually beat whatever our opponent is doing here? Oh, you're saying it sucks to just use strip on a base. Like, yeah, uh, that's fair. I also have a bunch of land and this guy and this guy. So really Thran Dynamo. I'm actually kind of regretting not flipping this guy sooner. Wow. They are really going to town here. What did you have? You had time walk mocks and I don't know what else. Um, why do I have to sacrifice this to do it? I don't want to not play things, you know? Oh. Alright, I guess we can do that. That's pretty good, right? Oh, three mocks in a time walk. Of course. Totally, totally normal. <laughs> totally normal. Uh huh. So. I guess we just keep. F we can tap two and activate this and make one. I think that's probably better than not doing that. And then keep three up and we can just tap their monolith. Because getting the creature out seems important. That's going to be, this is going to be fun. The problem is Thran Dynamo untaps Monolith. So if we tap it, we have to also tap down the Monolith. So I think it's actually worth waiting to do it during upkeep. We can tap the Dynamo, go to the draw step, and then tap down the... Tap this with this gentleman. And they're gonna add three. Yep. And then we'll go to the draw step. Oh, they're just gonna play something. Okay. 
okay. Still going to go to the draw step because I don't want them to use the remaining two and one more to untap this. So. <sighs> you also just tap down Mox Opal here. And then just tap this during the draw step. Tap that as well. You got it. What's next? Draw step. Tap this gentleman down i agree this card should not exist and i took it out of my cube for this reason it doesn't win games quickly it's just not fun oh they can just tap it and untap it with its own mana that's smart why didn't i think of that they can always tap the monolith for mana let a punter resolve and use the mana that's so smart why didn't i think of that i don't know little interactions like that sometimes i'm like that doesn't wait they, they just topped again they didn't even use it what okay yeah it's just not a fun card like basalt monolith is really its own engine it just taps and untaps itself all day yeah but my i don't like i don't want to i didn't build a cube so that everyone can suffer when they're playing it like i, I took out a bunch of the the miserable cards and and things that just have miserable play experiences. Oh, we just won the game because of opposition. Fantastic. Lovely. I want to keep adding more artifact and enchantment removal, but we have a lot. We have Kogla. We have Outland Liberator. Pest Infestation, which is an MVP. We have Nissa. Natural Order to get Kogla or any of the other ones. And we have Invasion. So, like, we have six cards that directly deal with artifacts and enchantments. We also didn't really see anything. We just saw a bunch of artifacts, so. I'm having fun watching you play opposition. Well, at least that makes one of us. I'm, Cause I'm not really watching myself, so I can't say, you know. Joke's on you. My deck is heavy creatures, my dude. My hand is four creatures and a, a non-creature. I sometimes wish they would have named that card just a big ape instead of Kogla. Well, you know what they say. Wow, look at this. Look at this Talarian Academy. I personally love Opposition. <laughs> Nick Squirt, that's disgusting. Oh, fast bond, huh? I actually think I want Druid here. Druid ramps us to five, and if we draw a land, we can Kogla. Tireless Tracker, we don't have any lands, but even if we do, we play a land and we get four mana, which doesn't really do much. I think Druid is just the better play here. We're also going to attack. There's no way with Talarian Academy out and Mox Opal that they ever block. So, get that free point in, you know? I guess we could have played Fast Bond, but then they're going to draw a card, so it's just not really worth it. Yeah, Pest Infestation here would be fantastic. Wow, it's just getting better. Holy smokes. Kogla also really, really good. We can just kill the Esper Sentinel and start cracking their cracking their rocks, you know? Well, land would have been nice here, but... That is unfortunate, but it does make Kogla indestructible. 
or uncounterable rather, not indestructible. <laughs> uh, one, two, two, three. Yeah, fast bond doesn't really matter. I guess we'll just play tracker here. Sure. All right. Well, hopefully they do nothing. They have three cards in hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine mana, that is a lot. Okay, they didn't do anything. And Kogel being uncounterable is pretty big game. Land. Give me that clue. That's good, because now we don't have to use this. So, green. This guy. One. Big monkey. Check it and see. Don't reprieve this. That would make me sad. All right. We did it. Get in there with this rascal. We're pretty far away from casting an opposition, unfortunately. But if we attack, if they, if somehow we can attack with Kogla, I think we're doing well. Because we get to kill Bitter Blossom or Thran Dynamo or Mox Opal, probably Thran Dynamo. Actually, their Mox Opal is no longer online because, you know, Metalcraft. I will say I'm really pondering what you've been say, what you've been saying for the, the last little bit on archetypes in draft. Um. Yeah, like that's why I don't have storm in the cube. I took out opposition because I just don't think it's fun. Oh, are we gonna get to attack with Kogula? Because that seems pretty good. Oh. Oh. Hoo -hoo. Also, I can make Kogla indestructible. That's kind of cool. Let's kill the Dynamo. I don't really care about Bitter Blossom. Storm is fun to draft, but it's never fun to play against. Plus, it it puts so many redundant cards in the cube that just aren't good in other archetypes, like Pyretic Ritual, Desperate Ritual, Cabal Ritual. Um, you know, Underworld Breach is just not great if you're not storming. Like, it's just there's so many archetypes that just... Or so many cards that just don't fit into multiple archetypes, though they're, they're really linear. And that just makes it kind of unfun. One, two, three, four, five. Done. Okay. What did their deck do? All they did was play Mana Rocks and Bitter Blossom. I don't understand. See, they had a game like like our first round, only to a much lesser degree on both ends. <sighs> Dude, I love so many of these Planeswalkers from Commander Masters, but I really wish that they didn't rely on colorless things. Like Zuladoc Void Gorger is so cool. And I was really excited when I first saw him. A 7-4 for 6. Colorless spells you cast from your hand with mana value 7 or greater have Cascade, Cascade. There's just not enough of those in the cube. Whereas I'd love to like... Maybe I build around... Maybe I build around Eldrazi in a cube. I don't know if that'd be fun. But like, I wish this just said like spells you cast from your hand with mana value 7 or greater have Cascade, Cascade. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's too good. But like... It's kind of cool. Like, I just wish, like, I, I the thing, thing is, I like these cards, and I just wish they were more playable for someone like me who, like, mostly just plays cube. A colorless cube feels like it would probably be a little... 
I hate to say it because I just used the word, but I feel like it would be a little linear. Like, I feel like it would be very monotonous. Nothing like the one land hand. This hand seems pretty good. Let's see if they have any artifacts or enchantments in their deck. We'll probably we'll probably put the eight back. Eldrazi in the cube as an archetype is fine, but like I mean, because then you have to you have to change the entire mana base. Um, you have to add like lands that produce colorless, like pain lands. Um, and even then there's only gonna be ten. So you have to put probably two two types of land per color combination that produce colorless or add a bunch of just lands that produce colorless because of like thought not to your reality smasher um matter reshaper but then also like even those don't trigger zula Dock that much like this is just going to trigger off of like seven mana karn ugin and like the nine ten eleven and fifteen mana eldrazi which are a lot of those are in there anyway you know what i mean so it's not like you're like, it's not like you're adding a ton more than is in a regular cube. Uh, definitely keep. They probably pitch a Baruski. Oh, all is dust. would. Be... So the problem with all is dust, though, is that you're going to cascade into a creature and then cascade into something else. And then you're going to all is dust them away because that's going to be the last one to resolve. This is my this is my cascade hand. This guy into this guy into they're all gone. Oh, good. Black Lotus on turn one. Chase the Mind Sculptor. Ah, oh, yes, Teferi. Wonderful. Right, but like the things you cascade into aren't guaranteed to be colorless. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Let's fast bond. You're countering this? Sure. You got it. Pitching cryptic command. Interesting choice. They are guaranteed. I guarantee them. That's impressive. I'm really impressed by your your personal guarantee, you know? It is now day. Well, I feel like we're a little behind already because that's what Black Lotus does to people. Puts them behind. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, a bit of old vintage cube. Oh, a bit of the old vintage cube, my, my dude. Always a pleasure. I'm very surprised they countered fast bond when I had like three cards in hand. Vendillion click entered the exile zone. You're supposed to put the land in the exile zone and play that. Interesting. I am fascinated. Is that correct? Like, they put this in hand. If this one in the exile zone, one card goes on top and then one card goes on. One card goes in hand, one gets exiled, and then one goes on the bottom, right? So this should have went on in the hand. This should have went in the exile zone. There's no reason to put this in the exile zone. Maybe there was no land. Maybe they didn't draw the land. You know? Who's to say? Well, no incentive to attack Teferi here, so. Did they misclick? We'll never know. <laughs> Get the opponent in the chat. Hey, opponent, what are you doing? Did you misclick? Yeah, maybe it was three spells and they already had an island. That's also just an option, so. Two 
two damage. Mizzy Mortars? Wow. That is aggressive. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I can actually attack their Teferi and murder him. And then still play a Seekers Cherry and they have one card in hand? That's a nice little... That's a nice little reward. The good thing about Pest Infestation is you literally don't have to destroy anything. You can just choose nothing and make X tokens. XX tokens. Which is nice when you have a chariot. Like, we can next turn go five, make four tokens, and then crew the chariot. Has he had a great birthday? Yeah, his birthday was probably... Just wonderful. Oh, we just win this game. That I did not see coming off of turn one Black Lotus, I'll be honest with you. Okie dokie. Um, God, I want Leovold so badly. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. I want Leovold so badly. But, like, it's just not feasible. I kind of want to bring in Endurance and take out, like, one of the Artifact Destruction cards, but maybe not. The Graveyard didn't seem super relevant. I'm still I'm still utterly shocked that they counter that fast bond. Oh, this hand is terrible. Not a great upheaval hand, let's say. This hand is way more acceptable if we had a green source. We're on the draw. Do we trust hitting like a green source in like the first two turns? Yeah, meanwhile, both of these were in, in both my hands, right? I don't know. I don't really want to go to five, I'll be honest. We still have two lands. I'm going to keep this. I think a green source has to be imminent. We'll pitch Hermit. That guy doesn't seem exciting, but upheaval could be an endgame plan. Pest infestation could always be good if we hit a green. And then natural order is obviously great with both of these if we... If we make the creatures. Make those creatures. Store, what time did you go to bed? And then what time did you wake up from, from going to bed? How much sleep do you have in the, in the chamber right now? As the kids say. Oof. 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 <laughs> Oof. Oh, boy. Hey! That's pretty good. Really? Okie dokie. I never actually fell asleep. Oh, so you just, like, kind of laid there and then unsatisfyingly woke up? Or got up, I guess. Yeah, Lorcana Lorcan 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 seems to have the same resource system as Versus System did, which is one of the one things I loved about Versus System. Wow, this is funny. Um, you could just play any card in your hand as a resource, but there were also cards called Plot Twists um, that when you played those to your resource row, you could just flip them. So you let me play an island, then you cast Vendillion Click. I'm very confused. And you let me keep my hand. Fascinating. I mean, that made sense, but... Just a weird time to do it. Like, I'm in my main phase. I'll pass priority to you. Okay, now I'll Vendillion click you. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, look at that. That's a good one. I mean, this guy's 100% absolutely mutilated, but... Why isn't this... This shark seems like it should be an artifact creature, right? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody agree? Anybody in the, anybody in the chat think this should be an artifact shark? 
I think any creature that's a Phyrexian should be an artifact. Yeah, sure, man. You got it. Didn't see that one coming from 10,000 miles away. Thank you. Hmm. I guess we're just killing this. Running chicken TV. Thank you for the sub, buddy. Welcome back. A shard effect, if you will. Mm, I'm not sure if I will. I'll be honest with you. I might not. I will pass and take five damage, going to seven life. If we get a green source, we can natural lure, assuming they have no counter spell in hand. I doubt they have any counter spell in hand, right? Two cards. Hard cast force of will. It's okay, we didn't hit green spell anyway, or green a green land anyway. Or there. Or there. Or there. Or there. There we go. Totally normal. Totally normal sequence of events. I wonder if I just want, like... I think I just wanted, like, another creature that can start getting in there early. I don't know. Um, Opposition with, like... I guess it was... I guess we had two creatures out. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't over, actually. I think I was just so, you know what? I think I was just so in the natural order plan. I also um, gave you my guarantee that they had a counter spell in hand. So that, that should, that should really change the, the, the narrative, I think. Yeah, I don't, yeah, twin, I think twin is fine in the cube. There's tons of answers for twin. It's not super, like, it's not super consistent. Oh, I mean, there's, I mean, like, what? Tamiyo's not a vintage card. The vintage cube isn't about only playing vintage cards. It's about having the vintage power level, though. Like, you can't just, I mean, like, this is a modern card. Mind Slaver's not super powerful. Like, Endurance is a modern card. This isn't, like, Endurance isn't played in vintage or legacy, but it's in modern. Like, Fiend Artisan is in, like, not, like, a lot of these cards are just modern cards. Like, Oh, twin is definitely powerful enough for sure. I mean, is is the twin combo more powerful than like Augur of Autumn? Yeah, probably for sure. It just wins on the on the board. It's like a two card combo that wins a game. You know, I mean, sure. I mean that. I mean that's one thing, right? Like. <sighs> I'm just running it. It's also a 2-3, so it's a creature that can actually, like, not die to uh, Bone Crusher Giant. I guess Stomp is what we're calling it. Oh, they mulled to six? Finally. Justice. It's cold in here. Yeah, okay, so Endurance might have been um, a bad example, but I gave plenty of other examples, so we don't need to um actually this this consistently. Oh, actually, I might correct you there, good sir. I know you named eight cards, but one of them was incorrect, you see. Right, like, no one's playing Deep Forest Hermit in, like, probably Legacy or Vintage, I hope. Soaring off the top would be. Did you actually? Actually, you named four point three cards, not eight. Musy. Okay. Well, that's great. Always a pleasure. Yep. Wonderful. Oh. 
Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't think a lot of the green cards need to, up, up, need to be upgraded. I think the green cards do what they do. And like, you're facilitating the green style decks, which is exactly um, what you what you kind of want. I mean, like, Garrick Wildspeaker is just a card that's, like, not going to need to be upgraded. Like, it's just a, a good card. Like, Primeval Titan, Hornet Queen. Like, all those cards are just great for, for what they are. I mean, I think green might be the weakest color, but I also don't think that's a product of the choices. I think that's just a product of, like, mono green is going to do the least degenerate stuff. It doesn't have... You know, it, it's creature based, whereas like black decks can get by with things like tendrils or demonic tutor, like blue decks can do upheaval things like, I mean, if you're channeling or natural ordering and getting away with it in green, I think those things are very powerful. Oh, you're going to Vendillion click? Great. Yeah, I think I think the green cards are individually the least powerful, but I also think the green deck is one of the most cohesive and powerful decks you can draft if it's if it has the correct pieces in it. Interesting. They didn't they didn't take anything. They know they can take cards with Vendillion click, right? I I would be surprised if the blue red deck had a way to deal with this. They literally just have to counter Deep Forest Hermit, I guess. Okay, I guess they can bounce it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep, all right, you got it. I mean... I don't know what if you high roll means though. I don't know what that means. Like that's a weird that's a that's an interesting thing to say. I don't actually understand that. Um the point is that like you're looking at it from like a very spiky perspective right now, I think. And that's not how people draft the vintage cube a lot. Like the way I I draft is like, hey, this is a cool card. I want to play this card. Like it feels like almost like when people look at it the way they do with like you know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna play if I wanna win, I'm gonna do this. If I wanna do a medium thing. I want to do this. Like, like it's almost like the cards don't actually matter. And like, it's just, they could be like total blanks. Like, whereas I'm like, Oh man, look at this cool seven drop. I want to do this fat seven drop thing. Cause that seems cool. Like, so I'm trying to have, like, the most fun in interaction and, like, and 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 play cool cards and have cool moments. And, like, I, like winning is secondary to that. I agree that the cards need to enable sweet archetypes not be equivalently powerful. That I, I agree with that completely. I think you can have individual cards that are kind of medium to low power, but if they go into good decks or if they enable other decks or strategies, I mean, I think that's like 100% to the point. Okay, so they have three cards. Cube is 100% draft EDH. I, I, I think that's a great command. I think that's a great comparison. And I actually am surprised I don't like Commander more because of how much I do love Cube. I think it's because Cube is a different experience every time I play and I get to play a different deck every time. Whereas like, unless I have like 400 Commander decks, I don't really get to do that as much. Yeah, ASA Snyder, 100%. Like that's that's me in a in a nutshell to a T. All right, well, we're attacking big tefs here. Check it and see. 
Yep. <clears throat> so what do we got? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine mana, huh? If they have a counter, I'm just going to make them counter this. And then we're going to natural order. Yeah. Spell Pierce? Well, that's fascinating. Okay. That'll do, pig. You're bouncing Vendillion click. Sure. Yep, alright. I mean, my hand is good. <laughs> so. Oh, they're targeting themselves. <laughs> okay, well. Pitch to daze. That would have been good if you let this resolve and then I and then you let me cast natural order. I'll let them keep their lands. I'm gonna tap them a million click, I think. Actually I'll just take three here. Uh maybe four though. Uh, that's three, four, five, six. Six if they have a way to put another card type in the graveyard. They have two cards in hand, though. Still feels correct. I mean, they can only counter one of these, you know? So, presumably... Okay. Well, if we did that pre-combat, we would have had... They would have had a 3-3, so that's good. They have one card in hand. Let's do a big yoinkers. Hardcast Force of Will. Okay, Doomsday just does not seem like a cube card. <laughs> I have never seen anyone with a vintage cube that had Doomsday in it. I think it's just a little too narrow. Like, I think the, the, the work you have to do to make a Doomsday work in a cube is just astronomical. Oh man, we paid an extra. All right, well, just gonna. Let's get some more lands. Where's my colony garden so I can make a token? One, two. Our mana base is not exciting, but Primeval Titan in opposition is exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got it. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to your draw step.
Null rod. <laughs> it does nothing. Oh, you didn't want to use that? Okay. Tappers. I guess I'm going to tap it in response. Oh, you did not. You chose not to do that. Okay. We'll take three and presume you can't do five to us here. Famous last words, I'm sure. Okay. Six, nine, nine, ten, eleven, three. We have 15 damage on board. Oh, we just killed them, don't we? We just tapped down Regent? Yeah, they're just dead. That's going to be the game. Oh, we can just play that guy, too. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, otherwise we'd opposition tap down this and then attack for six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and kill them. Yeah, all right. Two, one. Surprising two, one. Wasn't sure... That this deck really came together in all the ways we tried to make it come together. But nevertheless, some good cube discussion and two out of three victories. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.